Hey everyone, welcome to AWS Data Engineer Training Program. And today's topic is ELB, that stands for Elastic Load Balancer. So from last uh, two weeks, we are talking about EC2 instances, servers, even Lambda functions and all, right? But those are independent or individual server. Sometimes we have to use load balancer as well. Suppose you have multiple server, five server or 10 servers. And as a user, when I'm accessing my application or accessing the website, usually as an end user, we never know how many servers are behind the scene because we are accessing the load balancer and behind the scene load balancer will redirect the service to a particular server. The benefit is that unfortunately if one server is down, the other servers can take care of the load. That's the benefit and ultimately the end user should not be affected. So let's start the class with the agenda. The agenda is overview of ELB service, type of load balancers, application load balancer, network load balancer, load balancers health check, target group, EC2 launch templates, auto scaling group and auto scaling policies. There are many terms here which may be quite new to you but you don't have to worry about it and all these terms are interrelated. Like we are talking about load balancer, we are talking about target group, we are talking about launch template, scaling group, scaling policy. So here and there these all terms are related to each other and all these things we will be doing practically on AWS trial account so that you can get more details about it. So let's start with the first uh, one, ELB overview. So it distributes the workload across multiple compute resource. Lambda is a compute resource, EC2 instance is a compute resource. So depending upon the compute resource you are using, it can distribute the load. The benefit is it increases the availability and fault tolerance of your application. First thing is your single system will not be overloaded. The load will be distributed among multiple uh, systems. Another benefit is unfortunately if any system is having any fault any system is down by any reason in that case the remaining system will you can say handle the load and you can add and remove compute resource from your load balancer as per your need today you are having suppose three servers behind your load balancer that means your load balancer is distributing the load among three systems but even after having three system you feel that all three systems are overloaded that means you need more system so maybe you are planning to add two more system to your load balancer so you can do that now the load will be distributed among five system and earlier that same load was distributed among three system so the you can say performance should increase on the other side suppose your project is over now and you are planning to decommission some resource, decommission some website and you are saying that we are not getting that much of load nowadays. In that case, you don't need to uh, maintain a lot of servers. Maybe you can decrease it. From 5, you can make it 2. So those two systems are good now to handle your load. So this is very dynamic at runtime. AWS is smart enough that as per your load, it can increase or decrease the number of system behind your load balancer. At the same time, you can configure health check, which monitors the health of the compute resource. That's very important thing. Because when we say that if any system is down, your load balancer will not redirect any service, any request to that particular server. Rather, it will forward the request to other servers but how does load balancer know that this particular system is down that is based upon health check so health check is the thing which is letting the load balancer know whether the system is up and running or the system is down 
the load balancer sends request only to healthy servers because load balancer has the detail which server is in running state and which server has crashed so any new request coming it will always redirect your request to a running server only so these are very basic uh, things about load balancer how to create a load balancer what are the different type of configuration what are the different type of load balancer all these things we will be exploring in upcoming slides so i am stopping here for two minutes in case you are having any doubt till now you can ask me okay let's move to the next <laughs> slide so you can see this one there are six users users want access to the same website there are six users and there is a one elb elastic load balancer and behind the elb there are three ec2 instances so because elb is for distributing the load it will make sure that two of the users request is redirected to the first server the two will be to the second server and the remaining two will be to the third server basically none of the system is overloaded and the load will be distributed among the available servers okay so moving to the next one type of load balancer there are different type of load balancer and then different type of uh, features are there application load balancer is there you can read this like when we uh, when we should go with alb so there are different type of protocol if you have idea little bit idea about the different layers of network you can see that http and https if your website if your application is http and https based mainly websites e-commerce websites get all this thing right in that case application load balancer will be a good fit on the other side if your application is mainly like uh, gaming website that is the protocol for gaming is udp in that case you should go with network load balancer and gateway load balancer is mainly for third party uh, websites third party you can see this one choose a gateway load balancer when you need to deploy and manage a fleet of third party virtual appliances that support Geneva. these applications enable you to improve security compliance and policy control i will tell you suppose any new request is coming to your website that can be a cyber attack right so there are third party website or not website third party services are available which can inspect your request that means before your request is going to the end server prior to that the third party application will be monitoring your request and if they find something suspicious they will block it immediately but if they find everything is okay then they will pass it and your request will go to the end server so for such type of requirement your gateway load balancer will be helpful Otherwise, in normal scenario, we go with application and network load balancer. So let's do it practically, then we'll get more idea. I am going back to my console. Okay, so I will search for load balancer. can see this one load balancer is coming here so feel free to stop me whenever you face any uh, difficulty any doubt so you can see that if on the ec2 instance page we one day we talked about instances and amis volume snapshot all these things we talked about right if you will come down on the same page there's a one section for load balancing so click on load balancer and as of now there is no load balancer you can see this one zero load balancer 
that is fine we'll be creating one so click on create load balancer and the same screenshot i have attached to the pdf application load balancer network and gateway we'll go with the first one this one application load balancer you can give some name maybe i would give my first alb application load balancer after that you want this load balancer internet facing or internal if you are expecting that the user will be from outside of aws that means suppose you are launching a e-commerce website so that means you will be getting the request all over across the world that's internet facing alb or there can be some application which is internal to your company that means your application will be accessible within your company's network on your vpn in that case you can create internal it depends upon the requirement so let's go with internet uh, facing ip address type is ipv4 or in case you are creating if in case your company has ipv4 as well as ipv6 in that case you can go with dual stack otherwise in normal scenario you can go with ipv4 recommended for internal load balancer you can see this one okay so after that vpc as you know every aws account has a unique uh, you can say default vpc so that vpc also is already selected and after that you have to select at least two availability zone this is very important thing because we are maintaining multiple servers and we are thinking that if one server is down then other servers will take care of my load that is true but suppose my load balancer itself is down then who will redirect my request to my servers irrespective of even if i am having multiple servers available all servers are up and running but unfortunately my load balancer is down then i won't be able to access my website so as a best practice this is a requirement from aws that you have to specify at least two availability zones for a load balancer and aws will maintain that load balancer in those two availability zones that means in case one load balancer is down in one uh, availability zone at least another load balancer i mean it would be the same only the configuration and everything will be same but that will be available in a different availability zone so for the end user it will be completely transparent transparent that means they will never know like what is happening behind the scene which load balancer my request is going to and from load balancer which particular server my request is going to they will never know that okay so you can read this first line select at least two availability zones and one subnet per zone so two availability zones we will select maybe we'll go with the first us east 1a and us east 1b that's all and you can see this one subnet is already selected 